All right. Welcome once again for those who are watching the recording. Uh, we have a shared notes document as well. Um, as my colleague was putting the link to that in our uh, chat, you can use that document to flag and write down your questions as we go. Um, if you do have questions as we go through the presentation, you can also put them in the Zoom chats. And today's flow is going to be, I'm going to start with a short presentation, so around 15 to 20 minutes, and then we'll open up the floor for questions. So if you put questions into the chat, we'll answer it at the end of the presentation. This session is designed as a place for learning and conversation. We ask everyone to be curious, to ask for clarifications, and to ask questions to challenge all of our thinking, to hold space for one another, um, be curious about each other's perspectives, hold space for each other to ask questions and contribute, and be respectful. You can find our full code of conduct on our website and in the link that is shown on the slide here. So before I talk about the fund, um, I would like to introduce briefly Invest in Open Infrastructure or IOI as we call it. So we, our mission is to increase the investment in and adoption of open infrastructure to further equitable access and participation to research. We believe that for our open knowledge to flourish, our system needs to be similarly designed. And so our work is always seeking to advance a vision where open infrastructure is the default in research and scholarship. So how do we advance this mission? Uh, we primarily approach it in three ways. First of all, we conduct research um, to guide strategies and actions to, with stakeholders to increase adoption and investment in open infrastructure. We also uh, provide uh, resources and strategic guidance to help funders, budget holders assess, evaluate, and make investment decisions about open infrastructure. And last but not least, and that relates exactly to the work of, of the Open Infrastructure Fund, we pilot solutions and, and coordinate stakeholders to try different ways to increase the, stake, the sustainability of the open infrastructure sector to really look at how we can build a shared agenda to make open infrastructure the default. What does this mean in reality? And for us in particular, looking at you know, the next half a year to a year, we currently have three uh, focused projects, if you will, that we're running or core programs rather. Um, so first of all is uh, again, very related to the Open Infrastructure Fund. We are um, really looking at ways that we can catalyze investment from a diverse pool of uh, investors and funders into open infrastructure. Um, so the, a little bit of the reason behind building the Open Infrastructure Fund is really to uh, be able to experiment and pilot ways in which we can help inform what the design and the structure of what we're calling the 2024 fund, uh, which is a bigger fund, a bigger amount of resources that we're hoping to mobilize into the open infrastructure space. So again, there's two different separate efforts that we're talking about here, the Open Infrastructure Fund that you're all interested in and the 2024 fund, but they're very related to each other in terms of helping inform and, and uh, the design of, of, of each other. Um, we also are working on something that we're calling preliminarily the data room. Uh, this is a set of tools that are uh, hopefully gonna be useful for decision makers in terms of helping to guide their investment into open infrastructure. And that includes something that is called a catalog of open infrastructure services or COIS that you might be familiar with uh, that we've launched last year. And then last but not least, um, we're also uh, working with specifically with um, a few teams, uh, open infrastructure services to really provide targeted research and engagement um, to help them uh, become more resilient and sustainable. So that's kind of the current focus and core programs at IOI. Now I'm going to transition to talking about the Open Infrastructure Fund, which again is the reason you all are here. 
um, and to talk a bit about what we uh, aim to achieve, uh, but also to uh, walk you through a little bit the application process, some of the key points that you should note there, as well as the evaluation um, procedure. So in terms of the Open Infrastructure Fund, the overall goal is really to look at how we can strengthen the sustainability and resilience um, of open infrastructure that underpins research and knowledge creation. Um, so if you've read a bit our uh, call for proposal documents online, you will see that uh, there are certain kind of uh, basic facts, if you will, that I'm also trying to hopefully explain more clearly here. So uh, in terms of the fund, um, we're looking at supporting projects in three main areas. First is capacity building, and then strengthening community governance and critical shared infrastructure. Um, and I will go into more details about these three areas later on. We really wanted that this fund is uh, available for anyone, regardless of where you are in the world. So regardless of where you're based, you should be able to apply. And specifically, as we look at the um, kind of resourcing inequity across the world, uh, informed by our previous funding design survey, we've decided to reserve at least 60% of the funds to individuals, organizations, and projects in low and middle income economies. And I will also be happy to explain a little bit more what we mean by that later on. Um, for the level of funding for this fund, we're looking to support projects at the amount of 5,000 to 25,000 US dollars. Projects uh, can be up to a duration of two years and the starting date should be between November 1st and December 31st of this year. Um, that has to do with kind of the process before we, you know, finalize the grant agreement and everything. And again, I'm open to questions regarding that as well, if there are any later on. And then last but not least, probably the most important thing, the deadline for application is at the end of July. So I'm going to speak now more about the three individual funding areas that we're looking to support with this call. First of all is capacity building. Um, and really we're here, we're looking for projects that would improve the technical reliability and security of open infrastructure services. So uh, as I said, um, we've been very lucky and very privileged to have been um, able to gather input from a wide com community in terms of the shaping of this call. And the three funding areas that we've chosen now reflects the results of that funding survey, funding design survey. And so some of the ideas here that also came through the survey uh, in this area includes uh, activities around creating and updating documentation to make it easier to onboard new contributors, maintainers, and users for the open infrastructure service. It also includes activities for training institutional staff and users on implementing and using open infrastructure. And that could be an existing version of open infrastructure as well as a new version of that infrastructure. Last but not least, um, more than welcome to use, apply for funding to organize events, to strengthen relationships or networks among contributors, maintainers, and or user communities. And I would say that these are ideas that we, the team at IOI had, as well as came through the funding survey and our previous kind of needs gathering activities around the fund as well. But you, if you have additional activities that are not on this list, I would anyway encourage you to apply as long as they are fit within that goal of capacity building to improve the technical reliability and security of open infrastructure services. The next area for funding is strengthening community governance. And these we envision to be activities around organizing community workshops to discuss governance needs and or redesign governance structures if needed. You could also use funding to convene dedicated com committees and working groups of key stakeholders to lead work on diversifying governance. 
or uh, any work on improving governance processes, be it, you know, reviewing evolving bylaws, other policies, coming up with uh, sunsetting procedures, um, you know, moving uh, vision and mission documents to be more transparent. Um, you can also refer to previous work that IOI and others have done in terms of, you know, what meaningful governance mean and kind of how you can move towards that for more inspiration on, you know, activities that you could do to ensure that you know, infrastructure services are acting in accordance with values of openness, transparency, and accountability. Last but not least, the final funding area is what we call critical shared infrastructure. Um, this is an area that is um, a little bit <laughs> elusive if I would, if I could say, um, but it does encompass very specific elements that, you know, really we're looking for efforts that would push people to collaborate across and work within existing systems, as opposed to, for example, reinventing wheels. Um, and so things that would fit very well into this area would be, for example, shared technical developments across two or more open infrastructure teams to enhance their interoperability but also thinking about, you know, when it comes to using uh, open infrastructure and shared infrastructure and making sure that they work well and can address the needs of local communities, um, the adaptation and the customizations that are needed for that to happen. So it's again, a relatively broad area of work that we're really looking for ideas in the end that, you know, encourages people to collaborate. Um, as I said at the beginning, we are committed to reserving at least 60% of the total funds for individuals, organizations, and projects in low and middle income economies or services that are widely adopted by communities in low and middle income economies. Uh, for a definition of low and middle income economies, um, I think it is on the FAQ of our website, but it is according to a set of uh, definitions uh, laid out by the World Bank. And there is a link on the on our website um, that will give you an exact list of economies that are within each category. Um, so knowing that this is also something that, you know, has a lot of complexity in terms of understanding whether or not your you and your work or your organization is within this category, um, we do have a question in the application form that asks you to describe whether or not you uh, would fit into this, um, this bucket, if you will. We are also, because knowing that uh, a lot of folks in low and middle in income economies are primarily Spanish speaking, are accepting um, applications in both English and Spanish. So the application process, uh, we are running our entire application process on something called Open Review is an open source tool um, that allows us to not only efficiently handle the reviewing and the application process, but also uh, provides a level of transparency that we'd love to test out in the current iteration of the Open Infrastructure Fund. So for you, um, that means that if you are planning to apply for the fund, we strongly encourage you to register for an account on Open Review as soon as possible. Um, knowing that sometimes they do take up to 24 hours to approve a new account. Um, you would need to submit your application through the Open Review portal. Um, we do provide templates for application forms. So both Google Doc and uh, Microsoft Word file format. Um, those are available on our website, both in English and Spanish. And I put the links in the shared notes document as well. Um, so you can use those for drafting, but you can't use those for submission. You need to copy and paste the answers onto the open review portal. Um, there is also a budget template that you'll be asked to use. Um, and that laid out quite nicely what sort of items you can ask for funding for within your project. Um, and you'll be asked as part of the submission process to export that as a PDF and upload it um, as you submit your proposal. 
we are also um, deliberately hoping to openly review all of the applications. And so from the moment that your application is submitted, it is then visible to everyone else uh, on the internet. So um, by submitting a proposal, you are agreeing that for your proposal to be publicly accessible and publicly reviewed. We are working on a guide for applicants in terms of you know, how to write a great proposal. Um, and that will be shared hopefully in the next couple of weeks. And we'll continue to expand on our uh, frequently asked questions section on the website. So just a recap of some of the key dates. Um, we're currently open for uh, submission uh, on both on open review and well, on open review. <laughs> uh, as you are here, you are in our first office hour session. We are also running another two sessions, one next Monday, June 26th. Uh, that will be only in English. And July 6th, Thursday, that would be both in English and Spanish. Um, so if you know of anyone else who would like to apply and would love an opportunity to come and speak with us, please feel free to tell them to join. Um, as I mentioned, proposals are due July 23rd, 20, sorry, July 31st um, at midnight UTC. And um, we look to uh, notify any decisions regarding the funding decisions by, uh, well, in September. Um, it is subject to change depending on the number of proposals that we get and uh, availabilities of reviewers, et cetera, but that's what we're aiming for at this point. And then for, between September and November, we anticipate a period where we will be looking to finalize the paperwork and the due diligence process um, prior to um, you know, being able to transfer the money to the grantees. So the next section I'd love to cover some of the evaluation criteria that we will be using for uh, this call. And just in terms of that process, we are currently in the process of putting together a community panel, community advisory panel to who will be um, handling the uh, kind of review process and be the one who will be reading and scoring the proposals. So uh, myself and Jerry and IOI staff are in general not involved in the review process. We are just facilitating um, and uh, the community panel will uh, be kind of referencing these criteria and guidelines and will also have a robust conflict of interest policy in terms of their participation in the reviewing work. So the evaluation criteria fall into three categories. The first is alignment. So we want to understand where proposals are aligned with our goal to further equitable access and participation in research. And uh, this is, scored, if you will, against kind of four specific points. We're looking for a clear articulation of objectives that are aligned with one or more of the funding priorities of this call. Um, the proposal uh, outline should also be thinking about how they would be working with um, their communities, so users, supporters, and others to on the proposed work. Um, we're looking at the kind of openness element of the proposed work. So whether the project concerns or work with a not-for-profit or non-commercial platforms and services, whether they employ open standards and protocols, and whether they encourage the use and reuse of content data and underlying code with minimal restriction. Last but not least in this category, um, the proposal uh, should present actions and strategies to reduce marginalize, marginalization and further equitable access and participation in research. The second area for evaluation is um, what we're calling the evidence of unmet need. Um, and this uh, is kind of broken down into do two elements, if you will. The first is the demonstration of the need. So the applicant should clearly con convey the need for this project for the communities that the project serves. Um, the second is the unmet part. So whether we're interested in finding out whether or not the, this project or this type of work has been funded or whether there is 
you know, a scarcity or a neglectedness in terms of funding for this kind of work. And last but not least, looking at feasibility and readiness for the project. So um, this is, I think, relatively straightforward is, you know, that we would love to have projects that are feasible within the established period of time of development and the budget, and that the applicant should show a careful and thorough understanding of the skills and resources needed for the project, as well as the potential challenges. Um, these sound relatively, you know, quite a lot of criteria, but um, I hope that our application form is also a way, the and the questions that are structured within are a way to guide you through thinking about some of these criteria um, and how, whether or not the project uh, would, would meet them. Uh, last but not least, a little bit on reporting and uh, progress. So we, we thought quite hard about how we could make this as easy as possible for awardees, knowing that a lot of times, especially with small um, small grants like this, it tends to cost more to um, to to you know report and keep track of the project progress with funders than the, the actual award itself. So uh, what we've decided on is hopefully something that is relatively lightweight. And also it's a process that will allow us to learn from the awardees about you know, what this funding is doing. So uh, we asked all successful applicants basically to have a 45 minute check-in call with someone in the IOI team every six months throughout the duration of the project. And on the call, we would, you know, uh, the calls would be recorded and, and uh, we'll have automatic transcription for the calls as well, just for, so that we do have that kind of written documentation for the reporting. But in general, we'll be asking questions like, you know, what have you been most proud of in the last six months in terms of the progress of the project? What are the challenges that you've encountered? Um, just to get a more textual understanding of what you've achieved and um, to celebrate with you. So this is also the place where we envision that awardees could use to uh, communicate any kind of pivoting or major deviations from the proposals. That's it in terms of the presentation. Uh, thank you so much for listening. I hope that was clear, but if not, this is, how, this is why we now have a space for questions. Uh, but before we head into questions, I'd also love uh, if you just to, um, just a little call to action, if you will, um, if you, we could ask you to please help spread the word on the fund as we look to get, you know, a diverse range of proposals and, and applicants as possible. And so uh, in the shared notes document, you will find a little comms pack that we've put together actually uh, for, for you to um, reuse. Uh, it contains things like social media, um, text and email templates and text for you know newsletters and things and so if you could help us tell other people about this that will be really really grateful and if you have any questions at any point please feel free to email myself uh, or Jerry our email addresses are on the slides here so I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna have to I'm gonna go to the questions uh, so I see that some of you have put questions on the shared notes document, which is fantastic. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat as well. You are more than welcome to ask questions in Spanish. Just bear with uh, our interpreter as you know she has to switch between channels. So uh, please be patient while the interpretation comes through to me in English and I will answer uh, as soon as I hear. So um, with that, I'm looking at questions. So there's a first question here. Uh, is, so I'm gonna repeat the question now. Um, is the capacity building program limited for a specific open infrastructure mentioned in COIS or it can be any open infrastructure service or software? Uh, can be anything. <laughs> uh, COIS started, uh, the current prototype has 10 uh, open infrastructure services. So um, 
of course, you are more than welcome to have projects that work on capacity building, community governance, or critical shared infrastructure around the ones that are on COIS. But you are more than welcome to have those projects uh, strengthen the resilience and improve any other open infrastructure service. I hope that answered the question. If not, please let me know in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. It, uh, I get in the answer. Thank you. Um, okay, second question. If you are an organization located in a high income country, but the work that you are proposing is located in a low and middle income country and have established partnerships with the organizations in these countries, would the proposal be considered for the 60% consideration? Great question, thank you. Uh, I would say so, I would say yes. Um, again, in our application form, there is a specific question that asks you to explain or describe um, how you consider your project to be fitting within that particular, um, like the carve out, if you will. So uh, we'd ask for you to kind of try and explain that. And I think what you've explained here for me would fit within the, the that particular bucket. Um, but I would also say that I would not be the one who is reviewing these applications. So it's also up to our reviewers, but I do think that that is in line with what we would consider to be within the, uh, the LMIE's uh, criteria. Yeah, me. Is that an additional question? Oh, I think it's just sound that's coming through someone's microphone. Thank you. I hope that answered the question. And again, if, I, if it didn't, please feel free to let me know in the chat. Um, all right, next one. Um, we need some aspects of our governance documents reviewed by a lawyer to ensure legal compliance and prevent interference by bad actors to our community run program. Is this allowed use of these funds? Yes. <laughs> It, thank you for, for thank you for that. Um, it's actually something that we in the kind of legal compliance element um, of of especially the governance aspect of open infrastructure work is something that we've discussed a lot internally as a team. And so it's great that you flagged that idea. And I would definitely say that um, it is something that uh, you could use the funds for. Um, I think in the budget template there is a particular category for uh, external consultants or contractors. So you might want to put that under, um, under that particular category. All right. I see a lot of typing happening. Uh, please keep going. Um, Jerry, I wonder if in order for people to not listen to my voice any longer, if you want to read me a question. <laughs> for sure, not a problem. Happy to do so. So in terms of like the, the next question that we have here is please, please share the types of items that we can request for the grant. The budget template doesn't have that. For example, traveling costs, honorarium, food, hospitality, uh, kids, etc. Is there any cap on on this on the category? I hope you got that, Amy. I got it. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. I will see what I can do to improve the clarity of that template. But just by looking at kind of traveling on the rarium, food, hospitality, and kits, um, that all sounds re like reasonable cost for us in terms of if you were thinking about organizing events, it makes a lot of sense. I do think honorarium is on there, although I now have to double check. Um, but if you ask me, um, I think it, it is within uh, the, the, what you can request a grant for. Um, and there is no cap to what you can do because we understand, well, part of part of the activities that we want to fund or you, that is fundable um, is our events, for example. And so we do anticipate that those come with relatively large 
uh, travel components to it. And so we don't have a cap on any of those or other categories. Thank and you. please feel free to continue to ask if, if anything is not clear. Um, and I'm happy to review the budget template as well, just to see how we can make it more clear. So thank you for that feedback. Jerry. Oh, okay. Uh, next question would be, if all projects were from LMIEs asking each for $25,000 in the critical shared infrastructure bucket, will there be funds for only uh, two projects? Um, I'm trying to make sure that I understood the questions correctly. So, uh, if... I, I, Continue. Yeah. So, so if um, if we receive ten proposals for the critical shared infrastructure bucket area, all of them are twenty five thousand um, dollars. All of them from LMIEs. Then there will be two projects funded. Um, and I think the answer is yes. If they're all kind of you know equal, right? Like if we don't have additional, like if, if there are no other projects that have like kind of differing amounts there. So I think it's very, very hard to say exactly what is going to happen. Um, but my, you know, our intention is to first fully distribute the full amount of money within um, the, the bucket, uh, the area, each area. And then, um, then it might be a case of looking at, you know, the, whether the additional funding is split between the two projects or whether there are collaboration across projects or I'm, I'm totally thinking out loud here as you can hear. So that's a great question. But I think there's, if we do come to that situation, we'll be looking to, you know, have a process of kind of looking at where we could have additional budget negotiations or, you know, talking around collaboration across teams, et cetera. So it's, it's, I hope that, I hope I managed to answer that. I think we don't have a strict vision as to what that would look like at this point, but that would be what we would aim to do. Thank you. Uh, so in terms of the next question, then this would be along the lines of, of uh, can we request other fundings along with IOI for the same project, considering the fact that to target more, considering to target more number of professionals, do we need to mention what all other agencies will be exploring for getting the additional grants? So there's a couple of questions there. Um, so I'm going to break this down. So can we request other fundings along with this IOI fund for the same project? The answer is yes. Um, and to your second question about mentioning other agencies exploring for additional grants. In the application. I think actually, yes, uh, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, ha I can't remember if I actually put in a field about that, but I think if you have additional resourcing for your project, so either it's grants that already are funding certain projects or um, grants that you're anticipating to come in, I would suggest that you actually share those because it strengthens the kind of feasibility aspect of your work, if you will, if you understand. So, um, so yeah, so if, you know, if they are, we don't want, we don't just want to know because, you know, we want to be, there's, let me, Okay, let me be clear. We don't want to know because we want to be the only funder of any piece of work. So that's definitely not the intention. Uh, the intention is to understand whether or not the project will be feasible and the project is ready to be funded. So if there are additional resourcing that you're using to support other parts of the project, that's definitely, you know, that may be worth mentioning. That being said, of course, we do have a question on, you know, the neglectedness and scarcity of funding in the same area. So it really depends on, you know, whether those funds are for the same area or not. And I would advise that 
you know, um, be strategic about it. Um, I don't, you know, don't, I don't see the, I hopefully don't, I hopefully did not introduce the need to like hide anything, obviously, but, um, but yeah, it's just to note that we're also looking at, you know, whether a certain area is, is like a certain type of work is already, has already a lot of existing funding opportunities in this space as part of our evalu evaluation criteria. Thank you. Thank you. The next question would be in terms of uh, where do the funds for IOI come from? I think this is just looking at the resourcing for the open infrastructure fund itself. Thanks for that. Um, no worries. Uh, so if you're if the question is how is IOI funded, um, I'm very happy, always very happy to share this page. Um, hang on, let me put it in the notes document. So we do have uh, all of our current and past funding information available on our website. In terms of for the open infrastructure fund, so this $130,000 that we're currently uh, looking to grant, um, this funding comes from our own internal funding, uh, as well as additional support from the Simons Foundation and the University of Buffalo in New York. So uh, for more information, you can see I'm gonna find the link of the blog post that's describe how you know this fund comes to be the shape that it currently has. And that will give you more context as well. Uh, thank you, Emmy. Doesn't seem to have any additional questions on the on the document, but also any other questions that maybe come about now, you're also free to just open the microphone and also just verbalize. Any other questions? Uh -huh. Going once, going twice, and we're still open for more questions also via our emails as has had been provided by Amy on the last slide. So yeah, thank you for the time that you have allocated to joining this call and we look forward to receiving your applications. Uh, make sure to also remember to share the call for proposals with other people who you know who may benefit from this resource. So thank you guys for your time and your curiosity about this particular uh, opportunity. Thank you so much, everyone. Have thank a good you. day. Bye. Bye.